And then we come to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. And uh, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit, how we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and there is this duality between God dwelling in me, God dwelling in us uh, individually, and then God meeting with us in a special way, even when two or three are gathered together. And so there is something special that happens at that point. When we are together and we're seeking God's presence and we're worshipping or we're praying or we're reading God's word, meditating on the word, trying to seek God's maybe answers through prayers or whatever, and God falls on us in a special way. The anointing comes down and we feel and sense the presence of God. There is nothing greater than that. There's nothing that we wouldn't want more than that presence of God in our lives. And so in Ephesians 6, 10, this is something that we're doing to try and um, to hold on to that presence and to understand that, that our life is spiritual and even if we've gone through a spiritual crisis in our lives if we've come and understood and known the love of God and felt God's presence through that love of God and felt the anointing fall upon us we're really making sure that we're in a position to be able to feel that again when we come to Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 20 it says in verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the prayer and in the power of his might, put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God. And it speaks about that armour taking up the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the sword of the Spirit, that's the word of God, that's the, that is the offensive weapon, not the defensive one, the shield of faith is the defensive one, the, uh, the sword is the offensive one, the helmet of salvation, making sure that your mind is safe, fully convinced, fully understanding who Jesus is, what he means to you, how it works, and then having your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace that you can go it's about going, it's about moving it's not just about always standing it's about moving but there are times when we're on the defensive when the devil's coming at us and uh, all the attacks start to come sometimes we have to stand firm like the soldier it gives the idea of the soldier that the soldier, the Roman soldier for example had this massive shield and he kind of gives that shows you that kind of picture because the Roman soldiers were around and they would have known wherever he went the Gentiles would have known the Roman soldiers so he wasn't just talking to Jews in Jerusalem he was talking generally the Ephesian church was in the Gentile realm and, and Paul had a passport he was not just a Jew he was also a Roman citizen so he had a pass, passport to go everywhere and that's where he got to Ephesians to the church in Ephesus and he would have been talking about a Roman soldier showing them the picture of it as he spoke about how he put on the armour of God and showed that how it works and that's, that shield of faith that the Roman soldier had was a massive great shield and they would stand like a wall shoulder to shoulder with their short, short swords and they would be able to stand and they would have their, their feet were actually the, the sandals would have big spikes in them so that they would actually stand firm in, in whatever mud or, or whatever so that they would stand firm with this shield and it would be it would stand against anything literally they could uh, chariots come against all sorts of things and you know they would stand firm these shields would be so strong and uh, and and this is a picture of what we need to do Every morning when we get up, we need to make sure the presence of God is able to come. We need to have that breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and, and to be able to be in that place where God is going to make his presence with us. And, you know, each one of us have got things that Satan are going to attack and it doesn't matter what it is. If there's a chink in our armour, Satan's going to use it. And every one of us have to come to terms with that. Every one of us has to accept the fact that we are not perfect. Every one of us is a sinner saved by God's grace. 
Um, and so we need to always be on our guard against Satan because he doesn't always come at us you know, in the front door. Sometimes he comes in the back door and he'll attack parts of our armour. Maybe you don't have enough knowledge of the word of God for the sword of the spirit to actually work. And maybe you need to read the Bible to understand more about the word of God. So you can use the word of God when you're dealing with people. That's something else you need to think about. But it says here, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So it's that shield of faith. It's our faith. So our, our head is fitted with the gospel of, uh, of salvation, helmet of salvation, and guards our minds. We need to ask God always to, to keep us from temptation. The Lord's Prayer says, deliver me from the evil one. That's what it says. And, and to have that knowledge and understanding of the scriptures that keeps us safe. And we know, what we, we know that we are persuaded. We know what we believe in. And that shield of faith envelops us. It's like a bubble. And we put that shield of faith on every day. We decide every day we're going to follow Christ because Christ is our all in all and it's his presence that we walk in. We walk in the spirit, we're walking in the presence of Christ. That's what we're doing as Christians. We're walking in the spirit and with our armour on we're walking in the spirit. This is a spiritual armour. This is not physical armour like the Roman soldier had. This is spiritual armour. Psychologically we have put this on spiritually this is a reality and we step into that reality like a soldier of Christ that's what it's about and we long to make sure that we have this presence with us and uh, and so that we can be bold and we can be ambassadors for Christ and that's what Paul is saying here and then we come through to the New Testament to John's Gospel in chapter 6 Verse 56. And here again, we're talking about things from a, a much more personal perspective. Al. Now, we're talking about the fact that Jesus said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him as the living Father sent me. And I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. And so he's given us a picture of how we continue to know this presence in our lives. And so when people say the, the Eucharist is not that important, when they see it as just a memorial of something that happened with Christ a long time ago, they've missed the point. They've missed the point to such a degree. You'll see how much they've missed the point in a moment when you see what the disciples did. And this is what happens sometimes that people get, like the other disciples, they get offended. You know, there's a couple of things about Christ that offends people. The first thing offends non-believers. And I'll tell you what that is. The first thing that offends non-believers is that they don't understand that they can't earn their way into the kingdom. They don't understand that they can't do it through their status. And it doesn't matter how much money you've got. And it doesn't matter what position you hold in society. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. You cannot earn your way into the kingdom of God. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility. And there is what we call the offence of the cross. 